Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Jay. Pleasure being here. Um, being um, also, I'm honored to uh, attend the Tech Fest event in the Diamond Jubilee year of uh, IIT Mumbai. So, congratulations to the school, to Thank the institute, you. and to Thank all you. of you uh, being part of this great institute during this Diamond Jubilee year. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited. Okay. Okay. So let's let's start with your journey. I mean, not we don't get to see very often such an illustrious career. You've had a very impressive career. You've been working in multi, like a lot of, uh, you know, prestigious companies. Can you throw some light onto how is your journey been like so far? Thank you. I I don't feel I've accomplished much yet at all. Um, there is a lot more to accomplish in life. Um, so definitely, um, I'm beginning. So I think that's a good mindset to have as well. And then, um, especially being in a place uh, like. Silicon Valley, um, it kind of um, humbles you because there are so many super accomplished people. Um, um, so yeah, I'm, uh, I've been, I would say I'm fortunate to be um, being in the right place, mm -hmm. being in Silicon Valley, uh, living at the right time. So it's been, yeah, exciting journey. Right. Now, I mean, you've been a part of many companies like Oracle, VMware, uh, and of course Tesla. So. I'm sure like all of us, when we listen, I'm sure the audiences would agree. We, when we listen or we talk about Tesla, it's like the only picture that comes to our mind is Elon Musk. So I'd like to ask you, like, I mean, definitely it's not a one-man show that Tesla is all about now, like where it is reached. So I'd just like to ask you, what has your contribution been like to Tesla? Yeah, um, um, definitely. I think Tesla is, uh, I would say, the, the highlight um, of uh, my career, I've learned so much. I've been very fortunate to um, work uh, directly and closely with uh, someone like uh, Elon. I, I admire him a lot. Um, uh, extraordinary, and all of you know, he's uh, definitely a genius in many ways, uh, not just in technology, but in terms of uh, many, many things, entrepreneurial um, business, um, I mean, solving some phenomenal problems uh, that people just dream about solving, and he's really uh, solving it. Uh, so I think the experience has been um, um, absolutely great for me. So much uh, learning, working with uh, um, Elon very closely. Uh, I've been observing, um, I always try to learn from very successful people. Um, that's something to observe, both um, what to do and what not to do. Um, so definitely my journey with the Tesla has been the uh, highlight of many things. Okay. okay, so I'm not sure if a lot of people in the audience know this, but there's a very interesting story about you joining Tesla. So I'm, if I'm not wrong, you were working at VMware mm -hmm. when Tesla offered you a job for the first time. And apparently you rejected it. Right, and then I don't know. Second time they offered you, you uh, you, you yeah. accepted the offer. So what is it that I mean? I just want. I'm just curious to know what is it that Elon Musk spoke to you? Or how how did he manage to convince you to be a part of? Yeah, um, this is, uh, yeah. I, I I'd say, I mean, fortunately, I've been um, able to um, be associate and contribute meaningfully with quite a few great companies, Oracle, VMware, I would say right at the right times have been there, meaningfully contribute. And uh, at, at Tesla, I'll, I'll share more details as we kind of go into this conversation about, and about my contribution on what exactly um, I delivered to the company. I, um, I, I should say fortunate, the first time uh, Tesla approached me I was at VMware. The good news is uh, VMware was doing phenomenally well. Um, I was not actively looking for a job. From uh, both of my career from Oracle to VMware and then VMware to Tesla happened that way where um, this is what I tell my team as well. Um, good people don't, all, they're, they're not always looking for a job. And if you're always looking for a job, then you don't do justice to your current job. Um, so I was not looking for a job and then Tesla reached out to me just before uh, they went IPO. A very small company, the brand that is there today is very different. Elon, same person, but very early stages um, of both of his uh, great companies, Tesla and SpaceX. They reached out, I went and spoke to uh, all of the executives, including Elon, 
I was definitely impressed. Uh, I know um, I, I had a great one-hour conversation with Elon. And he shared with me about what is uh, what he's trying to accomplish, and I was very impressed about his vision. Uh, he shared about why is he building Tesla. He also shared about the platform. Uh, why is he starting with a luxury car versus a mass market car, even though his goal was to deliver a mass market car. And the thing is, he was very crystal clear. He didn't use kind of fancy jargons, very simple, but very clear on his vision. At the same time, I did feel it was a very ambitious vision at that time. Um, he very clearly said the reason he had he worked on a luxury car is because uh, the battery prices are very expensive to start with, right? Lithium-ion production, small volume, a high price. Um, luxury cars, the margins are very higher. So produce a luxury car, um, low volume, high margin. Reinvest the margin to go after the platform, building the platform for a mass market electric car. He definitely said his bigger vision is always to convert um, to electric mobility and reliable source of energy. Right? So those two are his big goals, which I was definitely um, very impressed with. And then he also shared his big vision on how is he going to get there. Um, and I felt like it was very interesting to me. And then the role that he outlined um, for me was, was super interesting because VMware, I was taken care really well. I was doing well, the company was doing well, stock was doing really well. I was sitting on equity of multiple, a couple of million dollars. So there is really no reason for me to go out. Um, but definitely Elon kind of had that uh, vision, very, very um, impressive. My role was also very interesting. He made it very clear it was not a very typical CIO role, basically not run the internal systems for the company only. So it was uh, the way he described this, um, Jay, I want uh, someone like you to build the central nervous system of Tesla. Uh, this is exactly his words. And then he said, I, it has to be a f um, seamless vertical integration with a closed feedback loop to um, our customers. So basically, the feedback loop of uh, the customers has to be the fastest in any industry. That way, we can deliver the product in the fastest way possible. At the same time, deliver the follow-on services, uh, anything we deliver in the fastest way possible. So very interesting. Being an uh, uh, engineer, I was a programmer at Oracle. For me, it was like, OK, building something ground up. And he wanted me to build all the things in-house um, platform. Um, so it was super interesting. but. What happened was that very, very early stage, Tesla couldn't come up with an attractive enough offer. When I say attractive enough offer, it was not cash only. Mm -hmm. um, because I had to leave so much, I felt at least equity is good for me. They couldn't offer big enough equity. So I felt I very politely, um, it was on the fence, I was discussing quite a bit with my family, and then finally politely declined. I went even in person to say, sorry, I love what you guys are doing, but you know, honestly, I can't, I'm not in a position to take this job. So I went back and did what I was doing, and then I was closely following Tesla uh, after that, even closer. Mm -hmm. So it was all concept at that time. Model Roadster was on the road, but Model S was just a concept at that time. And then slowly when I was following the company, they just came up with the first prototype model of the Model S. It looked gorgeous. So if I was following closely, and I felt uh, there are some points of time I, I felt like, oh, maybe I should have taken the job. Um, but I was fine. I was doing well. And then suddenly I got a call again from Tesla after a year. Um, I should say fortunate for me um, because it uh, looks like they hired someone and it didn't work out. And the time was running out to really build that central nervous system. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said uh, Elon would want to uh, meet me. And I, I was flattered. I felt like, wow, he remembered me. And then I went and had a one-on-one -on -one with them. Um, it was, it was uh, definitely, again, great discussion with him. I was also very impressed that he even remembered a few things I mentioned about uh, my interview before. He met yeah. thousands of people and I was like, wow, he's like such a great memory. Um, and then we were talking about my pet patent, what I did at Oracle, and then he was like, oh. so he remembered a few points I mentioned. So I was like, wow, okay, great. And then this time he said, you know what, we need someone like you yesterday, whatever it takes, how, how about um, we, we want to get you in? Uh, let's figure out a way to for you to get started as quickly as possible. So this time, uh, again, at that time, I knew Tesla couldn't afford to pay uh, the salary. I had to take a pay cut yeah. still. 
and um, I negotiated everything in stock options, which is great, which worked out exponentially more than I thought it would. Um, but at that, that time, to be honest with you, now it's a no-brainer decision. Um, I made um, n times more than what I uh, left at uh, VMware. But at that time, it was not an easy decision because Tesla was not proven. They didn't have a car. It was a concept. There were a lot more, um, I would say, critiques in a more on the negative side than on the positive side. Of course, there were like some great fans about the company. But it was not that easy to leave and make that call. But I was definitely on, um, uh, confident that the company is on to something. Okay. So that made the decision a bit more easier. Because for me, leaving a few million dollars on the table, not only that, the cash flow literally stopped. Mm -hmm. Because my monthly vesting of stock at VMware was like 10 times more than, more than my take-home salary. So it just literally stopped right away, but um, I was very excited about this journey and what Elon felt I um, should be building. Yeah. The central nervous system of such a cool company, I felt um, really excited about. And then um, I was, I should say, I was fortunate to hire a phenomenal team. It was not easy to hire at that time in the Valley because all of these great companies like Google and Facebook and LinkedIn, they were all ready to pay a lot of cash, which Tesla didn't have at that time. Mm -hmm. So it's all about selling the vision, talking about what I believed as a vision that Elon is taking. I had to make people who I wanted in my team believe. Yeah. So going after the right people, I was fortunate to hire um, some phenomenal people part of the team. Yeah. And I think that was the journey. And, and what we contributed uh, there, I'm very proud to say we built pretty much the central nervous system of the company. Um, uh, pretty, uh, from everything from Tesla.com, when a customer goes and designs their car browsers, to most of the systems in-house, mm -hmm. and um, including the systems that runs on all the Tesla retail stores. Um, so we brought that vision to life, and Elon was pleasantly um, uh, thrilled about what we did, and he's been a phenomenal supporter. Um, so it's been, yeah, it's a great journey. Right, I mean... Thank you. I mean, that's like that's kind of dream come true, isn't it? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I mean, Elon Musk coming and talking to you. <laughs> anyway, uh, so coming to your contribution, I mean, it seems like your con I mean, you know, your contribution has been really integral and major to the boost that Tesla has seen. So, can you talk a bit more about that? Yeah, I think it's one of the. I would say one of the reasons, of course. Um, again, as you mentioned, um, there is. It's a, it's a combination. Um, I would still say Tesla is a one-man show. Um, in the sense, like, they have a phenomenal team, but some of these tough decisions, if someone like Elon doesn't make, I don't think Tesla would be here where it is today. Uh, he is the, the person. He is the man who really uh, brought Tesla to where it is. And they have an absolutely great team. And they've been, um, I think he's been very successful in hiring some top-notch people. Um, but the key is more how he inspires them to go after that vision that he conceived and he wants to deliver to, to the world. From, from that perspective, early days, it was always like uh, every project that I speak with Elon would be like a mission impossible. Literally, the way he'll come up with deadlines for projects is like the first project I remember still... Um, Anand, who sits in the front row, I had him at Tesla, so he used to run my um, applications development team for multiple modules. We gave a project timeline of like uh, 18 months, and uh, he looked at us and said like, okay, I want this to be delivered in four weeks. <laughs> it's really four weeks. Um, and we were looking at each other, me, and there was another executive uh, on the business side and looking at each other, and he looked at us, and he knew that we were, like, surprised. And he said, like, I'm not kidding. I need it in four weeks. <laughs> so um, we, it, it was not an easy task. In, in ERP uh, as well, like, we replaced SAP 100% and built a homegrown system. Mm -hmm. Just bigger vision, connect every part together. What I'm very proud of is not about building a system. Many times I, in my career, I've built systems, uh, built software and delivered. In such a short time frame, we were able to build, and that software has been scaling uh, phenomenally well. Yeah. And I think big kudos goes to my team. Um, I think 
we built some of the platform when the company literally had zero revenue. And today there is a quarterly revenue of like I think seven or eight billion dollars. Um, it's just rapidly growing. It's just a quarterly revenue, and the platform we built has scaled um, phenomenal. So that's my uh, I would say it's a gratifying moment for me to feel like wow okay we what we built is really something that uh, the company is benefiting from. And even in early days we saw the benefit of that Elon's vision coming to life. That's uh, seamless vertical integration with feedback loop because the product won phenomenal awards on top of it the customer experience was also won multiple awards from consumer uh, reports and many other uh, organizations so it was a it was really gratifying to hear and see all of those successes so like your efforts paid off in terms of bring that ambitious vision of Elon Musk to life I would say so absolutely I think yeah. we uh, yeah definitely I think that's always for any any I would say um, creator um, anything right be it software be it a hardware um, that is the proud moment isn't it to see that it's right. like um, bearing the fruit people are using it and the company is doing really well yeah definitely it's wonderful so I mean you went on record to say that Elon Musk was one of your favorite CEOs you've worked with so describe a day to me as how is it like working with him some memorable experiences like maybe some challenging experiences or something like which was really beautiful experiences yeah i um yeah definitely the re the reason i said that um is uh, it's a, it's a now i'm a founder and a ceo it's a yeah. tough job to balance if you want to really it's a balancing act of multiple things right as a ceo um you have to balance so many things. I'm very in a very small scale, growing and aspirations to grow um, big. Uh, you have to balance multiple things. You have to balance, of course, your team, which is most important. Keep your team motivated. Make sure that they uh, they understand the vision. Um, they believe what you believe. It's fundamentally important. You you can't deliver a cohesive product. You can't bring something to life, uh, um, your vision to life, if that that cohesiveness is not there. So um, that, and then second is uh, your uh, investors, uh, very, very important because many times um, some of the massive vision um, cannot come to life in the timing is very important. Uh, each business is different, but you have to ma balance your investors and then you want to make sure that you uh, pick the investors. Then your customers, most important. No company um, lives without customers. So you have to balance your customers. So there is a multi and there are a lot more, lot more uh, actors and players in this. Uh, but the key is employees, investors, and customers. But it's not an easy balancing act, right? Yeah. Isn't it? You see. Um, so Elon does a great job um, in balancing that act. He has built a brand that is inspirational, great vision for uh, employees to go after, uh, get motivated about. And he definitely has given phenomenal returns to his investors. You could see from Tesla and SpaceX. They were not easy, but the returns were absolutely phenomenal. I'm sure he'll return even more um, to, to them. And customers. Customers love the product. And being at Tesla, I know how much of uh, emphasis he had pushed on everyone, rightly so, to um, take priority of customers as the highest one and of course customers can tweet to him directly and he'll respond uh, with the feedback the right feedback he immediately makes sure that the feedback goes into the right team and I think some of the platform what we built that's another very proud moment to see what the way we built it is we were able to show the feedback coming from customers um, to the, to the right people in the right departments instantly, almost instantly. So if there are ways to, they could see, that never existed in the automotive world before Tesla. Yeah, they couldn't, so it's a very much afterthought, isn't it? Because they make cars in mass, they deliver it to customers. Mm -hmm. and of course they respond, they all have all the right intention, but the feedback loop is not closed. It takes a long time, even if you, um, have a problem with the car usually it's either a recall or the next model whenever that comes in yeah. so with Tesla's that was different majority of the things were able to uh, get fixed almost instantly over there through firmware or software upgrades right. and of course now it's, it's great that pretty much phenomenal majority of the automotive industry is moving in that direction mm 
So it has transformed the automotive industry. And automotive industry used to be one of the boring industries a uh, decade ago, yeah. isn't it? Like today it's the hottest, yeah. one of the hottest industries. So it's great. So uh, you mentioned that you are a startup, uh, sorry, you have a startup, you are a, a CEO and founder of a startup. So can you tell me, I mean, you were a very influential post at Tesla, you were at the height of your career. What really made you do something, you know, really step out of it and start your own startup? Because I'm not sure a lot of people would do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, quite a few people thought I was crazy. Um, why, 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 one is not only being at the top position, but at the same time, building such a great trust with Elon. Um, and, and some people thought I'm... Uh, definitely one of my directs told me when I left. I mean, I didn't really leave Tesla directly to start what I'm doing. That was in the back of my mind, but I definitely wanted a break. Um, it, I made some similar decisions in the past. So when I moved from VMware to Tesla, my boss, who uh, is a phenomenal manager, I'm still in touch with him. He, uh, uh, when I submitted my resignation, from VMware to Tesla. So he brought in a bunch of printouts. I had a one-on-one -on -one with him. He laid all the printouts on the table and he's about news about Tesla. And he said, like, most of them were negative news. And he said, like, Are, do you really want to go here? He said, oh, why do you want to go here? You're treated like a king here and you have everything you need. What do you want? In the best interest, of course, he wanted to retain me, which was really flattering for me, but um, go there. So I think in that sense, um, I, Sometimes I feel that, you know, I've done what I have to do for the current role. When it becomes to a level where, you know, I'm getting more comfortable, um, I want to do something uh, bigger. Mm -hmm. So this seed of the idea was always there in my back of my mind. Mm -hmm. But I felt, you know, right time I built what Elon wanted me to build. In, and then, with the, of course, the help of a phenomenal team. And it came to life. Spent four years at... Tesla, and I felt I'm coming to a point where things are becoming more like a, uh, routine things. The bigger challenges are solved. The platform is built. It has scaled. Of course, it, there is a lot more scale to come, but I knew it's kind of the, plat the foundation is very solid. It's mm -hmm. continuing to scale. Nothing new for me to go really transform. I don't know whether if Tesla needed a J after that or for that role, and I felt, you know, this is an opportunity for me to go. And I found... Um, Something that I've been thinking from my Oracle days to VMware and then Tesla, it just solidified over and over and I felt there is a, a several hundred billion dollar opportunity that um, I could go solve. Okay. And that's when I took a break first and then I, um, after a few months, I did my due diligence on the market and everything and then finally I felt, you know, yes, we're going after doing this. And uh, I was again fortunate to have a great team. So we have a headquarters in San Ramon. We have a, a pretty sizable team, more than 100 people in Bangalore. And then we have a small office in Chennai we just opened. So it's been a good so, journey. So, so tell me something about your startup. I mean... Okay, I'll, I'll keep it a bit abstract, but anyone I would like to know more um, definitely can reach out. The reason for that is um, we are officially in stealth mode um, because we... Uh, wanted to keep it under the wraps for some very valid business reasons. Um, one is, the number one is distraction. I don't want my team to get distracted or even us. Once it kind of um, gets in media, you have to have, take time to manage um, that as well. So I didn't want that. We want the product to be phenomenal and the product to be speaking for itself rather than we telling about the, the product. So that's number one. Number two is uh, we felt, you know, we when fundamentally you're disrupting or transforming a particular industry, um, I felt like, you know, we, there are mammoths in the industry who've been doing this for a long time. Um, competition is another reason we felt, you know, at first let's get a great foundation built and then we go to market. So uh, 2019 is when we'll officially go out of stealth and talk. But we've been f fortunate to have some phenomenal investors in the company. So... Um, some big companies, not only in automotive, but in aerospace are investors. So, namely, very, very few. Um, we have uh, BMW is an investor in my company. Nissan, Renault, Mitsubishi is an investor in my company. Right. Airbus is an investor. Um, Fiat, Chrysler, Ferrari um, brands, uh, their parent company, XR, is an investor. So, we've been very fortunate to have uh, 
great people validating what we are building and the problem we are trying to solve and investing in the company. So a uh, long way to go, but we are, uh, I think we are going in the right direction. We have a great team as well. Indeed, best wishes to you. So Thank you. Uh, yeah, so you know, these days it's widely discussed that technology is evolving at a rate faster than even the human race evolved. What is your thought about this? Like, for instance, there's a lot that is coming in terms of technology, like, uh, as you know, artificial intelligence and all of that. So what, do, what is it that you like, dislike, or how yeah. is it that we move forward? Uh, great question. Uh, definitely technology is moving very, very fast, uh, right, for all of us. I think the, the good thing is the, um, the capability evolution for, of many things, what people thought could be pretty much impossible to do or only in dreams is happening fast, right? With the, with the processing power of data, you could see the easiest and obvious example for us is Google. You could yeah. know it processes so many, th so much data in fraction of um, seconds and delivers results back to you. Uh, and then the evolution of AI, and I know you guys had a session last couple of days, definitely needs to look into uh, space technologies is evolving, combination of many of those. Uh, there might uh, definitely be a resurgence of nano uh, technology as well. Technology evolving fast, I think definitely is a great thing. I think what I, I feel this is more in my view is um, there is also too much hype about these technology jargons about uh, AI and blockchain, right? Big data. Um, the I think as an, uh, younger uh, students and entrepreneurs, one thing my strong advice, which I tell my team is, see how do how are these technologies bringing value to um, what you are doing? Because there could be very quickly you could panic about all of these technology advancement and really make mistakes, just do things for the sake of doing, because everyone is doing blockchain, I need to do blockchain, right? Everyone is doing AI, I need to do something in AI. So the point is about, um, think what, are, what problem are you trying to solve for anyone, for your company, to your customers, um, anyone, and see how these technologies, it doesn't have to be everything you need to, do. if everything works, use everything. If a part of, uh, the thing works, um, use that, right? And then see how much you can, how you can bring value to your uh, customers through your product using that technology. Because simplest example I can tell you, right? Two big examples you'll relate to. Um, Amazon has been doing machine learning for more than a decade. They never told the world like, ah, I'm running machine learning, I'm doing AI. But you could see the value it brought in and now they are publishing, all of their doing is like open source now, Google, TensorFlow and everything, right? And Tesla, it's the same thing. I mean, today people talk about so much IoT and processing of big data. Um, Tesla has always been probably the most advanced IoT company. They never said IoT. We never said IoT. It's purely the value. Today we know Tesla is kind of a combination of the product itself is like IoT and big data and machine learning, everything is there. So yes, um, there are certain reasons why you want to advertise you're doing these things, but you shouldn't put the, the cart before the horse, right. right? That's my view on this. Okay. okay, so I mean, all of us know that you're a so super successful person. I just really want to know, or I'm sure all the youngsters in the audience would like to know, what is it that, you know, I mean, what is it that makes you so successful? What are your success mantras? Uh, good question. As I said, I still have a long way to go you know, to uh, bring more successes. Um, I've been, as I said, fortunate to uh, be uh, in the right companies, be associated with the right people, and definitely proud of uh, the contributions. So a few, uh, since you asked us and uh, kind of advice, I'll tell what worked for me, what changed. I was a, definitely a very average um, student um, in many, many ways. There are a few things I would, I would point out um, for learning. Uh, number one, um, you know, as all of us as humans, our natural response is, as we, is always uh, fight or flight. Yeah. Natural response. Because 
recent evolution of technology has been very fast the timeline is for for centuries we haven't we didn't evolve much right so the natural response for anything is fear so you always we all know when when we go through certain things the first response is fear when you want to come and talk in front of a crowd or even just go in front of your class or even just talk to a, a stranger for the first time always um, comes in there i would say the the first one is to the capability of each one of us is significantly more than what we think and i have been fortunate to be associated with the right people and of course elon is one of them to show how much i'm capable of um, doing and i would say our brain is definitely uh, is a supercomputer and i would say the uh, your your self talk uh, yourself in, in the brain um, is the program that runs on it that's i think number one and because there are early early stages of my career um, i will always think about when i am in a meeting room with people when i came to the us first I'll always sit in the corner I would not talk much I listen and I'll always feel like I'll have when I try to think about I have might have good points but I'll hold back I like what if people think it's wrong right so and they'll all talk um, really really well and then the communication and everything of course coming from India I I was like okay my my communication is it good enough so a lot of fear um, I had to hold back fear pressure so yes and I personally for me i feel a lot i do a lot about uh, personal improvement so i study a lot lot lots of books um i feel um both brain and or muscle naturally you, you if you don't use it you lose it so lot then i think this is the part where that self talk about programming yes you're you're i think you don't have to feel arrogant but at the same time you have to tell yourself you are not inferior to anyone and it opens up your mind immediately i'll i'll see you can literally see it's like a trigger when you keep thinking about like then you'll start talking about points um really you come out so overcoming that fear is literally that self talk is very very important um and then constant learning from i for me one is learning through there are multiple sources sources of learning and um, especially observing from successful people so i've always admired i think changing your attitude there are many 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 times in the early days when brought up us when and i don't know if it's still true rich people means they they are they are not good people most of the time and successful people means many times they are not they are probably arrogant i will be very fearful to go near them rich people means like okay they would have definitely cheated some people while coming up in life i think that attitude should change like anyone who's successful you need to feel there is they would have they have something good in them right many many things good in them so what did they do good so i always change my attitude to think about wow they've been successful what what was the reason for their success what did they do what can i observe and what can i incorporate into um my life and then um when you go into these um there are a lot of things where here and even you were still there i'm not saying it is not there but people always talk about um in organizations or in college or in school they talk a lot about people being political and and people always give excuse about just because of politics i couldn't do this um i think overcoming that is very very important um focus on um what you are um, contributing heads down i think automatically the the path will show one thing which i tell my team and and thought process is solution based thinking all of you might have heard is more about when there is a any problem in life or uh, technology or science right all of these the way elon or jeff bezos or steve jobs when they think about big problems they immediately think on the solutions so what the solution based thinking in my view is shift your focus to the solution you acknowledge the problem however big it is and then immediately shift your thinking towards the solution usually when you do that um of course the path will start showing step by step and the problem becomes bit smaller and smaller and smaller eventually it will dissolve to the level you solve it 
the other route natural human response is getting fearful when there is a problem there are a lot of people they'll kind of go into a downward spiral start thinking more and more about the problem not shifting their thought process to the solution when they think more about the problem the problem grows into bigger and bigger and consumes them and this is why example of some some people handling a certain situation in a very smooth way and the same problem you would see there are other people who will absolutely go berserk and then freeze yeah they can it's about what meaning you give to that problem so shifting your thinking towards solutions i think changes just opens up everything um i know it's a long answer i think these are the fundamentals at least worked worked for me okay so uh, i would like to ask you did you have that did you have this kind of clarity like in terms of your career choices right from the start or like what well, because like i have a lot of diverse interests and at times it makes me confused which way should i go so did you have this sort of clarity in terms of like okay i have to work in it software or definitely not so don't ever feel that you know, things will be crystal clear uh, shown uh, to you or anyone um it was a many times you know it's a gut feel uh, to be honest with you but there are signs you will realize but later later in life still you will never be 100% sure so it's a decision when when you feel you know things have lined up so much and the biggest reason you're not making a decision is uh, fear and comfort you have to break that and make a decision and to be honest multiple decisions i've made I and mean, of course there are people like um, uh, elon and many many others make massive decisions so big um, uh, kind of make, making that uh, getting over that fear and making that decision is very very important still some of the times you will feel like did i make the right decision i've always gone through i procrastinated sometimes but and fortunately i would say i've made the right decisions at the at the right time so yeah opportunity knocks your door people do say it doesn't knock the second time but for me i think it did so uh, it does it does happen so you have to just open your mindset when certain times you feel you know um you have to make that call you're just holding back because you're comfortable i mean what you're i mean many of all of you are really young what what is going to happen right and just go make a decision you fail in life it's totally fine and i don't have to tell you there are so many books and you i'm sure you've listened to so many people um uh, i mean i'm so encouraged in today's world especially in india in early days 20 years ago i don't think it was the case today it's it's very nice that people take failure also much easier i think it has to do more and more so people, so that you do the right thing and still you fail it's okay you learn you fail 50 times it's fine you learn 50 times but right. just make sure that how do you respond to that failure is number 1 uh, and then what did you learn is number 2 that's it that's yeah. pretty much it so um, i think yeah those, those are the two important things how do you change yourself accordingly yeah over time yes i think i've gotten better in making decisions of course success gives you confidence like okay last time i made this and it worked yeah. okay this time make it better right that's why i was saying when i decided to leave my job at tesla one of my director reports had a one on one and he said jay why are you really doing you know i can say there is some um, i i think you're not telling but you're taking some secret position to the president of united states i was like really <laughs> see you're going as a uh, advisor to uh, obama at that time i was like no 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 i said no <laughs> absolutely i'm not doing so that's why you're keeping it a secret i said no no it's not i said i'm definitely i'm taking a break and i'm going to do something else okay okay so your childhood has been in india i mean i'm sure a lot of your uh, education was here in india how is it like i mean yeah uh, very uh, good um i would say i'm a very average student in many many ways uh, my mind and learning capability opened up a lot i didn't realize the capability and capacity so that's why i said it's very important how you think so for example i'll give you um teachers are very important so if you have the right teacher definitely treasure them mm-hmm. just do whatever it takes to learn more because as all of you know a couple of things i can point out is um i think in information and kind of emotion together combines into long term memory right uh, what i mean by that is in a class when you sit the most boring class is the one that you least remember 
isn't it? Like when you sit, it's boring, you're yawning, you don't remember anything that's happening there. Because your emotional state is like not in a state to associate to anything. Um, and then of course there are the other side of it where there are teachers who can ma make the most interesting subject most boring. Okay, so run away from those classes. Uh, and then um, the other side, when you're in a good emotional state, you remember it really long term. So some of the uh, examples is like, you know, there are some nice songs or smell that you remember and you, s you go back like 10, 15 years suddenly. Yeah. Because you are in that good emotional state to remember things. That's why when there is a teacher who makes the class so interesting, you like the teacher, then you remember that quite, quite uh, uh, well. Yeah. So I think it is, uh, it is very important, uh, that uh, state. So for me, in early stages, I thought I, I'm bad in math. I had a really bad math teacher. So I thought I'm really, really worse in math and I always stayed away from math. And uh, I scored very average in math uh, just to get, get passed by, right? And then later on, when I moved to the U US, I started getting interest in, in, interest in stocks and uh, equity markets and capital markets. I studied a lot. I would say probably 100 different books about stock and I analyzed online um, everything, everything about uh, um, uh, fundamental analysis, technical analysis, just purely numbers, um, stock options, how are they calculated? Um, beta, theta, gamma values are there. How do you calculate an option value from a stock value? Mm -hmm. So after a few years, I'll, any given stock, I'll, the, the stock value, I can tell all of the other three values very quickly matter of seconds. Then my wife will tell, you always keep telling you're not good in math. How are you able to tell this? Okay. So that's an example of, because I got so interested in the subject, I was able to learn, my mind was able to retain. So these are the examples where um, you can open up your mind and your capability is much more. So my um, childhood in India was very average, but definitely it pre prepared me for so many things. It's uh, uh, some of the things I'm able to accomplish. Definitely I'll give it back to my bringing up in India. Right. The culture, how, how important, the discipline. There are so many great things. I learned very average family and then I felt I grew from there to where I am today. Did you enjoy the cultural shift from India to US? Uh, I haven't honestly shifted. <laughs> I'm still. Um, there are a lot of good things. Uh, I would say I, I. It's a hybrid. I think it's. It's also an interpretation. To be honest with you, yeah. people interpret the Western culture quite a bit from more than living than um, seeing in movies and TV series. They think that's the culture. But again, all of these are mostly exaggerated, and I wouldn't generalize anything. Um, there are great things and in my view, observing and trying to live to both uh, is important. I know for younger generation is very hard, they kind of sometimes get lost. Uh, I think this is where uh, your roots and your core values are important. When you kind of have a reasonable idea about what those are, mm -hmm. you can pick the best and then live into uh, where your comfort zone is like, okay, don't lose your roots um, from what you've learned. Definitely is important. Pick good things um, from the culture in the US as well, because one of the things which I really liked um, about um, more um, more on the I would say career perspective, corporate world, how things are very open, openly people recognize uh, talent. If you have talent, if you deliver, if you contribute, nothing stops you from growing. And I feel that was not the case 20 years ago in okay. India and I think now, uh, so yeah, uh, definitely from my perspective, I think I still follow kind of best of both. Okay, okay so for the people who are wondering in the audience, why is this not a lecture? Because Mr. Jayavijan happens happened to be very sporty, he wanted to make this like a conversation. So, I, I mean, you can talk about it. Why yeah, yeah, I mean, I felt one thing is like, I didn't want to prepare a presentation and then just come and tell what I wanted to tell. I just mentioned, told An Anume and Karan that, you know, list your questions. I said, I'm open. I don't want to kind of orchestrate anything. You think whatever the questions, right questions for the team or the people, um, I would answer that. What, what they want to know rather than what I want to just 
present um, because it like monotonous what i can mention this is much more like a dialogue on at least something uh, what they feel will be relevant for them to hear that was one of the reasons so i think we'll open the floor for questions any questions okay can you move around the mic yeah good afternoon so thank you for this wonderful session um i was just uh, trying to understand and i really enjoyed it um elon has elon musk has this unique ability of absorbing right anything from the other person and he he's very curious about you you know that so i just wanted to know i mean what is the process behind that so if i want to absorb a lot from you how what kind of process and procedures i need to follow to literally suck out and you know learn the most that i can from any conversation or meeting that i have good good question i can't speak for elon i'll just tell my view on what i what i um, observed um his um, i think focus is very good on the problems that he where he wants to really learn so it's like the laser focus something that um he uh, i can see when he wants to listen he's there just literally just focuses um 100% on um on the person and i think that which is something for me also when i think naturally what happens is you do two things in your mind um more than listening your mind always chatters isn't it like so if you focus a lot on the chatter you lose what you uh, this is why some people can remember names extremely well even one time you shake hands they remember the name um but not everyone can um i think that's what it is it's um, kind of toning down the chatter it, it's going to happen but toning that down but when you want to focus you focus um of course he's many times i've seen him if he doesn't want in the sense consciously he doesn't want to focus he doesn't right because he's always thinking on like 100 things in his mind but the laser focus is important toning down the um, chatter in your mind because as i mentioned earlier the fear and other chatter always happens like what do i you you start preparing response before even the question is asked or what the other person is saying so i think you might want to tone that down very openly just let the guards off and then just listen i think that's uh, i would say just my view what that's what i've observed when i during my one on one also i can see he'll just be focused 100% um on what i'm saying uh, it will be only very short and he's very efficient to the level where only people who know him because people will think he's arrogant his emails will be like one word all the time two words all the time because he's like he has to answer like 1000 emails uh, so um i think it's more being um, efficient in your uh, way you operate but to your question is just that observing um reducing the chatter being laser focused that's it so just a short follow up so once you've got the insight out of the data or the information that you have how do you sort of incorporate that so once i know that that xyz is to be done how do i sort of so it is that uh, 20 that gives the 80 um I would, the the formula is that 20% of the information that gives um the 80% of what you want what that means is what is the purpose so you are doing something i'm there are two things you can have a strong purposeful or logical it's not about purposeful i would say conversation um on a personal side on a relationship with your family with your friend with your loved one you shouldn't apply this one this is purely for prof- professional it doesn't work uh, for the professional um side i think you might want to immediately go back to your uh, core what is that you you are trying to solve uh, is it related to your company is it related to your career it related to a project and then just immediately take that process take that and process and see how much you can relate to where it is i can see there are meetings he not only i mean, i've learned as well your you, your mind should say and walk away from if you think things are not aligned to what where you're going maybe in a in a polite way but just you should be able to just say no and go and this is something people always say about steve jobs and um, he'll always say uh, to ask his executives how many times you said no today so it's also an art learns it doesn't come naturally to everyone in a good way you can always say no to things so you love to take that process it immediately and relate that is the piece relating to what are you trying to achieve 
from that conversation or you're trying to solve something you're working on a project like for example for me company i know what my vision where i'm taking it so if the conversation doesn't lead to that and how do i relate to it then you just get out of that conversation quick enough sure. okay we have time for two more questions so please good afternoon sir good afternoon uh, i'm a lot inspired by the so your success your hard work and your vision I'm thank sure you many of us would be so i want to ask what kind of failures did you um, see in your life sorry what kind of failures yeah, yeah uh, a, a lot i mean um um early i'd say um the many many um earlier um every i mean everything i mean as i said i came from a very um average um family um there are times i financial i was not really well to do financially um in in the us i when i was working i mean me and my family had a lot of debt majority of my salary was always going in repaying the debt and when you have those it's not easy to make decisions uh, it's you're always fearful right it's not just for you you have to take uh, family um, as well so um, but the key, key is more getting over and sometimes uh, taking bold decisions because i felt i was not sure many times after uh, did i make the right decision every career job i moved uh, as well the key is i did i was i've been fortunate to the failures are less but at the same time i learn from the failures and quickly um, move forward especially i i think i was um, I, i was fortunate to make most of my mistakes a um, bit earlier in life and i say earlier um, probably by the time i was like still not very early by the time i was uh, 28 30 i would say I made like all the mistakes and failures have, there are quite a few things i did in earlier um, jobs which didn't go well but the thing is um, learn and move on from 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 that um so yeah <laughs> tweet him tweet yeah it's tough so uh it depends so you you know like you asked there are millions of people who are trying to reach out to him it depends on what and uh for because it, you think from i'll put it this way right from his shoes think about uh it's it's almost impossible for him to answer um everyone he does answer reply to tweets but again um not not to everyone so if uh it depends on about what what are the particular things you are uh, you want to uh, tweet is the best way i would say um, more than email or anything mm, but if there is anything really big um, i'd be happy to connect uh, to his um, um, to um, his chief of staff um, at tesla and spacex huh? <laughs> yeah yeah you can tweet uh, for me you can send email yeah um, also it's not an issue you can do text email whatsapp i again i won't guarantee i'll reply right away but i will reply yeah oh. sorry you can either reply you can send him an email or either uh, tweet to elon musk proceed contacting me or to elon <laughs> elon Uh, so i i i gave you an answer there are two uh, i one is like you said uh, tweet so keep keep tweeting until he answers yeah <laughs> and then uh, other is like you could take my contact from uh, karan or anume and then send me a note tell me what are you trying to contact him about and then i'll i'll i cannot i connect him directly until i'm f- will confident it's important enough for me because even i don't he does respond to my email but i don't even b- try to bother him i know he's trying to s- solve some massive problems so unless it's really really important um so yeah if it's big enough important enough i i think i can connect to the right people who can who can get it in front of him okay okay we, i'll talk to you later last question please uh, sir good afternoon uh, so you have a startup also and you are a ceo also so as a startup and as a ceo what kind of challenges you face daily yeah i think it's lot it's not easy when um, most of the time as a, a startup 
CEO, first, um, the good thing is I would say I'm fortunate to have a phenomenal team, which is always a great thing. And I was uh, able to do that a few times in the past. So I was able to do that again. So challenge is the balancing act, as I said, right? It's very tough. Uh, because you have to deliver um, the product, you have to keep your team motivated and happy, you have to keep your investors happy. And early startups, I think some of the things which its balancing act is not easy. It's like walking on, not on a rope, walking on a uh, edge of a knife, really. You could cut yourself if you even make the slightest mistake because you can run out of money. If you hire fast enough, you'll run out of money quickly. Um, you have to sell, make revenue. So balancing act, I would say, is the toughest. Um, I would say uh, making tough decisions. Sometimes you have to make the, the right decision at the right time. Saying no to even many things. Hiring, saying no to business opportunities. Um, sometimes you feel like you, you don't know what to pick because there are so many opportunities. You have to keep your options open, which you don't know which revenue stream is going to bring revenue. Where are you going to generate revenue? It's a very multiple start because it's not about just my startup. I've invested in like 25 different startups. Um, I invest in startups. Um, I work with the entrepreneurs. I really support entrepreneurs quite a bit. Uh, I love doing that. Um, I see multiple companies, successful ones, failed ones. I'm able to learn from all of these. Uh, it's not an easy act, but learn quickly and keep moving and talk to more people like you're doing now. Ask the right people to learn so that I tell my team also, your lifetime will not be enough if you have to make all the mistakes by yourself. So you learn from other people's mistake. So that's why it's good that you're asking that question. So please do more of this, talk to other people and ask, like, what did you learn? More specific as well. If you're aspiring to be an entrepreneur, just go ask specific questions to other people on what did you do? How do you do this? How do you do hire great people? Uh, how did you pitch to investors? What worked, what didn't work? Okay, so how was it like talking to us coming here? Oh, phenomenal. Yeah, it's really, I always get energized talking to um, students, especially um, as, as I'm um, getting old, I feel younger being among <laughs> all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thoughts? Thanks for having me here. Any parting thoughts? Like any, any last kind of message to the youngsters here? Um, I think, yeah, I shared most of it is part of the conversation, but I think the fundamental thing is um, the opportunities out there, what you can solve is infinite, really. Um, what you believe and what you conceive, you can absolutely go do it. So don't create any um, barriers, literally break barriers. Don't accept anything out there as a barrier. Uh, that's what I would say. I mean, the, the great thing in today's world, the, the social media has opened up uh, for us to view so many uh, inspirations. There are so many inspirations for us to learn from. Uh, absolutely learn from it. And then also we talked about technology. Don't get, um, I would say, panicked or uh, worried about that everything is moving faster than. It's good to have that urgency, but don't get um, worried about it. Just focus on what you're trying to solve um, and then just go after it. Right. Well, thank you so much for being a part of the 22nd edition of TechFest. We're, we're very glad and excited to have you here. Uh, we wish you a lot of success, even more success for that matter and You're prosperity. Most thank you. And we hope that you continue to rise and shine and be an inspirational figure for all of us. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks much. for having, having me here. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks.